this is Cinema. And this is Johannes. And you are watching Board Gaming Roundly. The holidays are upon us. And these are 10 great games to give to non-gamers. We have not ranked this game, so these are in random order. But these are games that we think will make people happy and make people have fun. Yeah, because we need to share the joy of games, because all people should love games, right? Yes. Maybe not everyone should love them, but these are games that will make people happy and there are different reasons for that, so uh, let's get to it. Yes. So we, the first game we have here is actually two games. It's <laughs> Love Letter to start by and Infinity Gauntlet, a Love Letter <laughs> game. So this is very quick and simple mm -hmm. rules to Especially this game. Especially Love Letter. Yeah. So you, it's a card game. You have one card on your hand and then you draw another and then you have basically two kind of rolls and everyone has a rank and an ability mm -hmm. and you want to use that to get to the princess and deliver a love letter. Very abstract theme but it, yes. it is there. So you want to be the person that eliminates other players or just stays in the game num long enough mm -hmm. and have the highest rank to give the princess the letter. In the Marvel uh, edition of the game is a little different. One player is Thanos and the other are the superheroes. And Thanos is going to collect these infinity stones to his gauntlet. And the other players will have to fight him and try to make him not do that. But it is, it's simply, uh, it's mostly the same uh, drawing one more card than having two cards, playing one to uh, use the ability to beat Thanos. Mm -hmm. So these are very simple and also very fun, both for gamers and non-gamers and uh, nice for families. Yeah, I think if you have someone in your family or your uh, friend, like some some uh, kind of not older kids, but like 10, 9, 10, 11 that love Marvel, yes. I think it's also going to be really fun with the infinity of like a love letter theme is kind of boring. More for maybe families or more grown up uh, yeah. people. More yeah. grown up people. More grown up people, yes. It might be kids, but they are more grown up. Yeah. Next up, we have a very small game from Oink Games called Insider. This is basically 20 questions with a trader. And most people, like in Norway, we have talked about this before, they know 20 questions. Yes. But this is a great one to give because you say, like, it's 20 questions, but it's in a box and it has a couple of neat rules. So here it's a traitor. Somebody knows the word. And they're trying to make the other people guess the word, but they can't be too helpful. And they don't really want to be the person who guesses the word because after they have guessed the word, everybody has to uh, to say like, oh, uh, they have to guess who is the traitor. And if they guess wrong, then the traitor gets points and so on. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to play with points, we have done without. Just don't play with the points. Mm -hmm. Just play around. Hey, well, that was fun. Play another round. Yeah. And you also can play with points. It's kind of like uh, demonstrations where you can play with points, but most people don't. But this is a game that is very great because it plays from four to eight players. So you have to be quite of a big group. But this is one I always want to bring to, to family gatherings and stuff like that. They might be different this year, of course. But great for, for four, five, six, seven, eight players. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes to play. So it's like a perfect game and very easy to teach. So that is, uh, that is Insider. So next up we have Exit and this is an escape room game. Basically it's trying to be an escape room in a box. Yes. And we also recommend other escape room games mm -hmm. for this purpose because this is like a one time use scenario mm -hmm. that you're working together as a group to solve puzzles to uh, not get out of the room but solve the mystery and win so there are many examples on this exit is a one of the series mm -hmm. uh, and also unlock escape room the board game mm -hmm. etc which we really love ourselves mm -hmm. but also are nice to introduce people to the escape room experience yeah i think especially now like the best gifts would be also unlocked because you can play it again so yes. they can gift it to other people and you just it's a gift that keeps on giving uh -huh. and especially escape uh, unlock Star Wars we also did a review for that so you can go yes. and check that out that's a great one because you have uh, it's kind of a, a tutorial to unlock so you mm. can easily use that at your as your first unlock even if you don't like Star Wars and again if you have somebody in your family that loves Star Wars easy gift to get that one yes also in Norway we have the the escape room the game I talked about that is a family version of that I don't know if that's available otherwise but that is one that is good Next up is a game that's amazing for kids and adults alike. 
and that is Rhino Hero, a dexterity game where you build a house, literally, you build a house, not like you don't go into the yard and you, now we're gonna go and build a house. You build it by placing cards upwards on the table, and this says it's 5 to 99, I think that's like because you have to have some, um, I don't remember the word in, in, in English, but you have to be able to, to work your hands, like if you're three years old, you might just knock things over. But this is a great game, and I have a lot of fun playing it with adults, I have a lot of fun playing it with, with kids, it plays from two to five players. There's really no reason why you can't play it with more just to, to play with the pieces mm. and just make the, the, the tower as high as possible. But it is also a game here where you place cards and you other player, you can skip other players, you can make other players have to place two cards at once and all of that. So it's a very fun game for like this is one of my favorite kids' games of all time. Amazing to play both with kids and adults. That is Rhino Hero. Next up we have Mysterium Park, mm -hmm. and this is a game that we recently did a review of, mm -hmm. you can check it out. And this is basically a simpler and more straightforward, streamlined, quicker version of Mysterium. We really love Mysterium, mm -hmm. uh, Dixit is a popular ga game to gift here yes. in Norway. Yeah. Um, so this is like the best one at the market right now for that purpose, we yeah. think. This might be kind of the most complex game on this list because this is a different list than we usually do because these are very, very simple games. This might be the most complex. I would never have Mysterium on this list. No, this is basically you, one player is the medium trying to give a message to, mm. no, wait, a ghost yes. giving a message to, to the, the mediums. Make more sense. Uh, with abstract cards mm. like Dixit, a Mysterium style, and the other players are going to guess uh, based on that card on a location and a person mm -hmm. and trying to solve then a mystery uh, of who the ghost is and yeah. where he Not is. who the ghost is, but who killed him. Who killed him yes. and where. Yes, absolutely. So this is a perfect version to yeah, non-gamers actually. Mm -hmm. I think so because the, the very positive thing about this is basically only one person has to know the rules. Yes. So if you're like one person that actually be able to sit down and read the rules because rules are the hardest thing in all of these games to make people understand and play games is to mm. make them get into the rules. Yes. And in this one there are few rules but if you gift it maybe you can make like a quick start guide maybe you can make like a two minute video they can watch and, and make them and if you are with them just teach them the game i think yes. it's one of the harder ones but they will have a lot of fun if they start playing it yes next up we have then one of our go-to games that we always bring to family gatherings and that is bang the dice game this also has like some few rules because it is a hidden uh, role game so you have to kind of remember oh i'm this person how does that work again but other than that it's very simple and it has that yahtzee style of being very fun you roll the dice it's like a chunky dice you just roll them and you see what happens and you can re-roll and now i got dynamites oh i got arrows and and now i got beer so it's maybe not for kids even though it's at eight plus beer is good for kids in this game and you roll dice and you can give beer to other people to help them but maybe they're not on your team you don't know yet and that it's a very nice game there's lots of laughs to be had and um, up to eight players works well with eight players. I wouldn't really say it's a good one for three. It needs to be at least five, six players for this to be very, very good. But it's one of those games that just you will have loads of laughter and just so much fun playing Dice the Bang game. No, yeah. Bang the Dice game. Not Dice the Bang game. That's another game. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next up, we have Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. Uh -huh. Those who know me knows that I am no fan of Ticket to Ride. I so fun you chose this. Yeah, but this we've done a review for this as mm -hmm. well, Good and uh, Ticket to Ride is a game that many known gamers have heard of or seen in the bookstore, yeah. which we have in Norway. We have games in bookstores, and this is a shorter, more enjoyable, and simpler version mm -hmm. of Ticket to Ride, I think. So if I would give Ticket to Ride away to somebody, I would choose this. Just look at this tiny cute little box. And also, this is a game that I would be willing to sit down and teach them and mm -hmm. play as well because it do doesn't take that long time as usual Ticket to Ride. Yeah, a couple of notes. There's also Ticket to Ride New York, Ticket to Ride London, yep. which also in this box. I haven't played those, I don't know anything about those. And also, if you're gifting it to kids, there's Ticket to Ride uh, Junior. Yeah, uh, which also is pretty absolutely. good. I have played that with my nephew, and that is also a very decent one. So this is kind of like a step up from that. Yeah. But I think if you're like a, if you're like a seven eight years, I don't know what the eight range is here. 
eight plus. plus. Yeah. I would say that is fine. Like if you're eight, and especially if you have played Ticket to Ride Junior before, you can get this. But if it's the first time and there's kids in the family, Ticket to Ride Junior is also a very good one to give. Nice. Okay, next one then is for more maybe not grown-ups but um, youth and, and, and grown-ups alike code names this is a classical one you know about this one like there's nothing to say like this is great it's good with four i think it's even better with six but with four players you're gonna have loads of fun and if you're gifting to a, a non-gaming uh, couple then give you it yeah which is also amazing like we actually bought it after played it because it's actually a lot of fun and we had a kind of campaign thing of traveling around the world that is also cool. so code names uh, if they, if you know, like, oh, they're more wishful purple people, you have code names picture. If they're like, oh, you they love Marvel, you have code names Marvel. Yeah. If they love Disney, you have code names Disney. If they love Harry Potter, you have code names Harry Potter. If you're Rada Shavatl, you have lots of money. Uh... <laughs> okay, that was really fun. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> code names in any form is a good buy. Uh, not good buy, but a, a, a great <laughs> game to gift to anybody. And if you you can even get the, the extra large version, which I really love that we have up on the shelf. I love that because you, I was like, when I got it, I was like, oh, do I need this? But it, it's very good and I will play with that if you are more with more than four players. And if you're like me and you like, don't want to spend time looking, you're going to sit there and relax with big cards. So code names, a great decision to buy. Yes, I agree. So the next to last, sorry. Yes. Yeah, the next to last game is Magic Maze. We gifted, or my family gifted this to my uncle's family last mm -hmm, year, mm -hmm. and I was there the Christmas Eve to teach them a game, and yep. that helped a lot. But if you want something with, uh, it's a little complex on the rules in the beginning, but mm -hmm. this is super fun when you get into it. This is you're basically these heroes D and D style, but you to go to your missions you need to rob a mall to get your equipment. Teaching kids to rob moles. Yes, so this is a co-op game, but the interesting twist is nobody is allowed to talk. And if uh, you have like different directions that you can put, go the uh, the meeples. Move them, yeah. Move them, the meeples. Uh, so if uh, one meeple needs to go on the stairs, I have to hope that the stair mover roll sees that mm -hmm. that is what needs to be done. If I, and I can't say to them, so I have this red little, like, uh, big, big, big pawn, red yeah. pawn that I can just, like, stomp in front of people to tell them that you need to do something. Mm -hmm. But I still know, don't know exactly what. So this is really nice and it's also <laughs> like a chaotic game, but not that chaotic that the whole household just sits like this because the kids are annoying. They have to be quiet here, it's so awesome I that like way, yeah. that. And also it gets like more and more difficult. You mm -hmm. can start really simple to just get into the game. And there's also like allowed to talk in the beginning just to get to hang on it. Mm -hmm. So this is really great. A couple of notes here as well. There is also Magic Maze in space, which yeah. I think is kind of almost the same, but with a space theme. And there's also Magic Maze Junior. Yeah. So if you have, again, smaller kids, this is from 8 plus. So if you have smaller kids, Get a Magic Maze Jr. Yes. Uh, instead. The last game then is my favorite drawing game. The only drawing game I like. Pictomania. So the, my favorite drawing game. The only one I like. Yeah. <laughs> it's again by Vlad Zhivato. It's uh, the second edition of Pictomania. It's just pure fun. We have talked about this quite a few times already. It is the, the drawing game where you don't need to be able to draw. So this can be played by adults in a party. It can be played with families. It can be played by anybody. And we have the loft more than in almost any other game we played when we play this game. The rules are very simple. There's a couple of rules, but it's very simple. Um, and again, if you don't want to play with all the rules and you gifted somebody and they can just basically try to draw the things and see what happens. Like you, you don't have to play with the rules to have fun. And I know it's weird coming from me who don't like host rules and don't like doing other things yeah. that are in the rules. But if I gifted somebody, I'm not going to sit there and like, nope, you're not going to play that way. Uh -huh. It's not in the rules. But the rules are easy and it makes it even more like competitive. And I, I love this game. And I think this is a great one. It plays from three to six players, like in 30, 45 minutes. Great drawing games, chaotic. If you play with small kids, you don't have to play with the hardest cards where like you're going to draw philosophy. 
uh, or, or the, the difference because between the things that you have to draw gets harder and harder so it yeah. starts out really simple and mm -hmm. then it's just like legend and myth and you don't know what's what uh, I was going I thought you were going to say if you have small kids it's Pictomania Junior oh, no, <laughs> because there, that is your thing today yeah yeah but <laughs> there's not a junior version of this but this is like uh, most people know illustrations mm -hmm. so this is a kind of step up from that if you play like by the rules but mm -hmm. this is more fun so this is a great drawing game so yeah those are 10 games that we think you should gift to non-gamers this holiday season yes and that is the end of another video we hope you enjoyed it please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already i'm Johannes. i'm cinema and you've been watching board gaming ramblings and bye bye